Welcome to the podcast show by K. Bandavani, The Total Connector, Total Bitcoin, Austrian Economics, the hardest and scarcest money ever created in human history, Bitcoin. Welcome, a very warm welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kevin Devani. It's all about total Bitcoin, total freedom, total decentralization. And I have a very, very special guest today from India. Um, his name is Raj. I've been following him for some quite some time on Twitter. He and well, Raj, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Welcome and uh, thank you for your time and for joining me. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I have been watching your podcast a lot. Like it's my favorite uh, pastime travel. Uh, and uh, yeah, my, my name is Rajesh Mitra, and I am from uh, West Bengal, Kolkata. I'm um, by occupation. I am a civil engineer. I design bridges. And uh, I got interested in Bitcoin somewhere around October 2017 when the market was actually booming. And most like most of the other people, I came in with some handful of money and thought like, okay, I have this money lying around. Let's just uh, dig into it and see what happens. And then I went deep into this rabbit hole of understanding this thing. And uh, yeah, it's uh, the obsession just kept on growing. And uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm like. Uh, I'm just a student and uh, I like to study and I'm studying whatever I can get my hands on. And uh, yep, that's it. Wonderful. Uh, Raj, you know, I mean, I'm so fascinated uh, by the country of India. I've, I've been there only once as far as I remember. Uh, maybe I was, maybe also I was a child when I was there for the first time, but definitely I was there in Mumbai. It was for about two, two weeks plus and minus. And um, it was sort of a shock, but also very a lot of fascination with this country. Now, um, now to try to you know bridge it with uh, with that with uh, you know with with the main topic. It's all about you know Bitcoin and uh, Austrian economics and uh, you know the whole situation. Um, what is going on uh, not only in India but globally? You know, India, as far as I know, has a population of 1.4 billion people. And what I heard is that the population of India would even supersede or could supersede the population of China by 2027, 2030. Now, my philosophy or I don't know, my position, my perspective is that even if just a fraction, a small fraction of India's population feel the pain points, understand, you know, the essence uh, um, and the purpose and, you know, the vision of Bitcoin. And if, you know, really just a small fraction of that India's population would start, you know, understanding, accumulating, buying just a little, little fraction of a, uh, you know, of a Bitcoin, even if it's just a handful of Satoshis. Um, do you, I mean, is how would you how would you describe India's uh, position and you know and the and the knowledge and the level of knowledge the level of understanding and the level of interaction with Bitcoin in India? Okay, uh, yeah. Um, to start with, I would say like oh, we are far away from actually that thing to happen. Um, for people to uh, properly grasp and uh, understand this concept and uh, figure out the leverages that they can use while using this technology and figure out the problem that they are facing in life and finally connecting the reason of those problems uh, with the exit solution that Bitcoin is, it's a long process and it, uh, it, it, it will just take time and it will take some economic consequences to happen. It will take some political consequences to happen. It will not happen on its own. Uh, people don't simply get aware on stuffs just uh, because of curiosity. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention and uh, they need to feel the heat. They are feeling the heat, but they haven't been able to connect the dots yet that where is this exactly fire is coming from. So they need to connect all those parts and uh, right now the situation what I am seeing over here is uh, it, it's a completely different world. Uh, I hang around in this small Bitcoin Twitter talking about if, with the different peoples and with uh, cool and crazy ideas and uh, this uh, the present situation in the market with India is like complete blockchain crypto and shitcoin stuffs and 
it's it uh, people are looking at it as a means to make quick bucks so and 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 the scams are rampant uh, yeah. scams are everywhere uh, you think the shit coins are scam there are things in indian market that i can't even describe what they are exactly so oh my <laughs> so so weird stuff are happening here so but but that's natural that's natural because uh, this all of this is stemming from misunderstanding some very basic principles and problems in our society and, and also about you know it's isn't it also like despair desperation you know a greed right. of course but right. it's right. a desperation i mean there's i've seen so much poverty maybe it's more obvious in india than in other countries but you know because of the casting system you know i'm not a fan of dark Dogmas, religions, or caste—you know, class, uh, class segregation, discrimination—you know, all these uh, artificial creation of inequalities. But I'm like, if they, if they, you know, if if just a minority, a very small minority, and I guess it's more the middle class than the real poor people, which are in the majority. I'm sorry, I didn't want to, you know, cut you. Uh, um, why don't you why don't you continue? Uh, sorry, I didn't want no, to. No, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, go ahead. I, I understand that uh, point. Uh, basically, uh, the inequalities and uh, the situation uh, is uh, is quite worse in India. We we already have around ten percent in annual inflation rate. So people are feeling this kind of heats, and people are uh, and and all these scams, all these quick money schemes. They, these are basically manifestation of very high time preference mentalities. They just want to fix their situation. They just want to get those couple couple, couple hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot in Indian money, but. All they are looking for is this, and this creates all sorts of games and situations where you can game other people's ignorance and other people's time preference, other people's willingness to play the same exact game, and you can create this kind of closed echo chambers and loops of scams where just money is flowing around and around and around, and that's what is happening here. Uh, apart from that, uh, the Indian middle class have the highest amount of incentive right now to be part of this stacking sats movement the bitcoin movement they have the right amount of skin in the game they are in the worst kind of position they have the equipments but they don't exactly know right now so not only the middle class even from apart from the middle class uh, i am not even seeing a major academic movements or major academic class coming in help of this kind of infrastructure development or this kind of mentality development so the movement has to start from some so some very concentrated class of people who who actually have the uh, luxury or the ability or the curiosity to spend enough time to understand this thing understand what is happening then the difficult part start explaining it to people and explaining it explaining bitcoin to people is much more difficult than understanding bitcoin itself and yeah. we need a much more concentrated effort for exactly. even to think about middle classes to get involved in this system in a proper right meaningful way because it doesn't make sense to make an account in exchange get some bitcoin trade it with some other random tokens and withdraw that money as a profit it doesn't make sense like it makes sense for those people who are trying to make the profit but it doesn't help the movement in any way it doesn't help the vision to realize itself so what we need is people with proper intention people with proper intent people with proper methods and responsibilities that are required to be a part of the system or and to facilitate that system among other people and we are completely lacking that right now i'm hopeful that it will come within maybe next five or six years i don't know depends on a lot of situations but right now it's totally missing and even the influencers in the twitter that i i see are are, are more inclined towards this money making game the entrepreneurship market the business making market the youth is completely immersed in 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 in, in this uh, what do they say like this uh rat race kind of rat race kind of game to make more and more and more money and uh, that's what is happening right now so i don't i, I don't i don't see that uh, people will start stacking sats like uh, in a mass scale anytime soon it's happening it's happening in small individual 
pieces and pockets around the countries, but they are not as massive as it's required to get us to the next hyper Bitcoinization. Wonderful. So, um, Raj, what is the what is the legal situation? And I mean, if if let's say you know the average person out there, you know, who are mostly poor people would really if if they wanted to if they wanted to you know buy some you know a handful of satoshis uh what what is the situation i mean where do they have to go i mean how how what's the what's the you know the obstacles what's you know the hurdles uh, uh, or the you know the legal implications uh, on ramp off ramp you know um uh... yeah got it so uh, right now the situation is uh um, the RBI, the F uh, Federal Reserve of India, Reserve Bank of India, so they uh, released a statement uh, somewhere around 2017 or 2018 uh, that they haven't banned Bitcoin completely, what, but what they said is like all the regulated banks which are under their jurisdictions, they are not allowed to be engaged in any kind of transactions which have a smell of crypto in it. Mm -hmm. So. So they, they are not directly saying like you as an individual cannot get Bitcoin or cannot send Bitcoin to people or cannot buy Bitcoin from people. That's allowed, but they are imposing restriction on the banking. So what happened is like after 2017, this local Bitcoin got booked up. So in local Bitcoin, what you can do is like you can uh, connect to another person and wire him some money and he will uh, send you back some Bitcoin. And after uh, these banking restrictions, major of the exchanges got shut down because they were having hard time figuring out this uh, on ramps and off ramps for fiat. So they started their own uh, local Bitcoin kind of like setups where uh, they are uh, logging for KYCs and all the identification documents and they were facilitating these markets where you can just connect to another individual send him some wire money and get some Bitcoin so getting some Bitcoin is not a major like not not very difficult it's not very easy but it's not very difficult you can get some Bitcoin and uh, yeah so if people want to they can but it's very hard uh, to get Bitcoin without losing your privacy. So that's kind of like non-existent right now. I, I am not aware of any OTC cash desk operating in India. So most of the platforms that you can use, you have to use through KYC even for local Bitcoin, that's true. And uh, there is uh, the BISC network doesn't have enough liquidity right now. So last time I checked, uh, it takes a uh, quite some time and effort to find a suitable buyer and seller in BISC network to make that transaction. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Uh, Raj, you know, I mean, uh, what's so interesting, what I heard is, um, if, if, they, if you can confirm that, is that, uh, you know, the, uh, I guess Indian people, uh, they appreciate the store of value in gold, right? I mean, they use it as ornaments, as decoration, as jewelry also. And if it's true that 10 to 11% of the total gold supply of the existing stock that exists uh, is in the hands of Indian families, Indian women, Indian people. Is that true, first of all? And, you know, what do you make out of it? You know, when, when it comes to store of value and, you know, bridging the gap between gold and, and you know, and, and Bitcoin as a store of value. Right, right. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure about the number, but yeah, it's true that uh, almost every household in India, we, irrespective of their social class, irrespective of their economic class has some amount of gold in them. So even if they doesn't have a house, they have a gold. So uh, the store of value narrative of gold is so engraved in Indian culture and Indian psychology that people uh, don't even think about it. So. Mm -hmm. The problem is they acknowledge it, but they don't think about it in a rational or any analytical way to analyze their behavior, like why they are doing what they're doing. And then to extend that to Bitcoin and directly connecting the link that, okay, that's why I need to do the same thing with Bitcoin. Uh, they do that with gold, but it's engraved in their subconscious so deep that they don't realize why, what, why, why they're doing what they're doing. And this thing can happen for Bitcoin. Uh, I don't know, I, uh, like it's it's difficult to happen through uh, cultural manifestations because gold has some uh, ritual uh, benefits and ritual ceremon ceremonial existence in our culture. So uh, whenever there is a marriage or something like that, or 
any other kind of ceremonies, people gift golds to each other and they keep this gold. They don't even sell them. So they, they just keep this gold and maybe pass on to generations after generations. And that's how the store of value things works. So this mechanism is very prevalent. And I think uh, once Bitcoin reaches enough amount of uh, Lindy effect, where it just exists for so much long time that people kind of believe that, okay, it's going to do what it's going to do. And its only job is to transfer value through time. And once people successfully start observing that, maybe in their peers, in their relatives, then then they will also kind of mingle in with the idea. They, they, they have the thing to relate directly with the digital formation of this physical manifestation that is gold. So I think Indians are in a favorable position from that perspective. But yeah, they need to think about it a lot and they need to analyze it a lot in order to figure it out. So and I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful like a lot of conversations in many blockchain events and any many crypto events are happening in that tone. And there are some speakers who uh, even the uh, events are mostly like dApps, blockchains, cryptos, and these mm -hmm. tokens and that tokens. But there are one and few speakers you can see like pop up in the stage and talks about sound money. And so that's kind of cool. And these kind of things are slowly and uh, steadily emerging in the systems. Well, you know, what I see, I mean, in you, Raj, to be honest with you, I mean, I see you as also because you're from India, you speak the language, you're your native. I'm thinking, you know, and you understand it, you know, the way you talk and the way you educate, the, the, the thing you post on, on Twitter, you seem to have, you know, a really broad and still, you know, very focused and very, you know, interconnected knowledge on Austrian economics, or at least, you know, the principles of, of economical, monetary economical principles, you know. Uh, so you're also able to logically deduct, you know, when you talk, about, for, for example, about whatever the Lindy effect or uh, so I think, I mean, you could be, uh, uh, you know, if, if, if you get like, a, uh, um, you know, a certain exposure within, you know, some communities locally, at least, why don't you go on stage or, you know, do some workshops? I mean, are people open minded, interested if you would offer them, you know, to educate them uh, and, you know, at least, you know, make a living out of it, of, of that. Yeah, I, I have thought about it. And that's basically what I'm trying to do right now. So my, my objective right now is to create a group of uh, peers in local universities and maybe start a classroom type of sessions or meetup kind of sessions like that. Uh, I'm not very keen in going into events and gave a presentation because Bitcoin is not about presenting the solution in front of an audience and the, the and, and, and to make them click in certain way. It's, it's more of a cultural thing. It's more of a lifestyle thing. And there are more to this movement than just Bitcoin. The more I'm watching this thing, the more I'm observing and I'm, the more I'm getting convinced that Bitcoin is just a piece of the puzzle. It's a very huge, big chunk of the piece, but it's not the full puzzle. And uh, we have more things to solve. And for that, what we need is uh, dedicated uh, individuals, dedicated people who are willing to spend their free time without expectation of monetary reward to mm -hmm. ma make the effort to at least understand and then to contribute into the system in form of education, in form of writing codes, in form of writing documentations or something like that. So uh, we need to aware the army that we need to build the next revolution right now. We do not even have the army. So it's not about the public right now, it's about the army and that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, it's very difficult to make a living out of it though. So uh, if, if, if you don't do something to make it very popularized or you don't try to do something uh, very attractive and palatable to people, then it's very hard to make a money out of it. And uh, so once you try to do that, you kind of have to shift away from your actual, uh, actual motto of educating the with regard, without leaving the regard. And so that's what I'm trying to do. I haven't even planned about doing this two years ago. I was like, I didn't even had a clue. Like I'd be talking about this kind of stuff. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's what I think about it. And the, I'm no way expert on any of the topic I talk about in Twitter. Uh, 
back in 2017 when i start first started looking into bitcoin i didn't even know how python scripts work or what even is a austrian economics thing <laughs> okay i didn't even yeah, know that either. wording yeah yeah so all of these things i just learned along the way mm-hmm. and uh, I, I was uh, set in this quest of an epistemological journey of un- g- gathering knowledge and understanding how this world works and for that i started with theoretical physics and uh, without wow. even any uh, intention of going into something like bitcoin or something like that that's just just something that i had fun learning so after that i spent some times in physics and mathematics then i found bitcoin then i went into computer science economics and political philosophy and all and i'm just still learning in that phase and uh, uh, the objective i have right now is to gather enough around of people enough amount of people around me so that we can at least have some kind of team to explore these ideas into the next level and maybe build the infrastructures required for this future to actually make a real reality yeah that's a fascinating i mean journey that you have gone through and a, a fascinating evolution of you know of of of, of uh, understanding comprehension so um so raj i mean Okay, uh, what I was, I was going to ask you something before. So if people, um, I guess, you know, it would be preposterous or just arrogant to say, you know, uh, cannot, you know, can't, can't the people like afford like 10, even if they, j- just if they wanted to, if they had the intention, if they understood, if they said, you know, that's a store of value for me now. But if they wanted to, you know, it would be probably, you know, uh, a little bit uh, arrogant to say, well, uh uh, you know, can, you know, they, sh- they should afford like ten or hundred dollars or euros worth of of Bitcoin. But that's that's even a lot of money for most people in India, right? I mean, what's the average yearly income for you know for the gross for the for the majority of the people in India? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, it, it, it's 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 a lot of money. Like uh, the I I will get you a sense like. Um, the Casa note costs like three hundred dollars a year. Three hundred dollars is my yearly salary. So <laughs> there is no yeah. way uh, Indian can uh, act, even afford a Casa note to run it in their home as a hobby thing. So that's all they got. So and not even uh, a hardware wallet, like like I don't know a Trezor or something. Yeah, you know, at yeah, one one time. A, a, a Trezor is one fourth of my monthly pay. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah that's a that, that's a hard thing here because and and the situation is getting worse and worse as the indian rupee is getting more and more devalued yeah. in terms of dollars and uh, i i don't think the situation will rectify anytime soon it's only going to get worse but uh, the thing for bitcoin is it's divisible up to 10 to the power 8 places exactly it's divisible up to 8 decimal places it doesn't matter like all you need to uh, so when i first started buying bitcoin I, I the first thing that hit me damn it's so costly how can i ever afford a bitcoin so yeah. then it hit me like uh, i don't need to all i need to do is uh, save at least more amount of money than than my colleagues and i'm richer that's what i have to do even that's a single satoshi exactly. but that that will make may make me one step ahead in this rat race of and, and i i, I, I I'll, it, it's not like going ahead in the rat race. It's like stepping out of the game and saying, like, okay, I'm not gonna play. And uh, so Indians can save their money, and you just have to look at your local population and watch your relative position. Even if your relative position tells you like you can save five dollars a month or you can save one dollar a month, that's all you can do. But that's good for you enough. Like. Everybody else in your ecosystem, everybody else in your ecosystem, uh, society is going in the same place towards this doomsday of complete economic destruction. And you just slowed your pace just by this fraction. It doesn't matter how much the fraction is. It, it just matters that your fraction is comparable to your relevant peers in the economy. If that makes any sense. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, so most people i mean okay most people have a smartphone i guess i mean or is it affordable at all i mean or what, what no, kind no. of everybody everybody have a smartphone here everybody has okay a smartphone. so a smartphone you with a smartphone you can you know nowadays you know there are free mobile wallets just samurai or whatever yeah. or blockstream green 
so that would be still uh, if you know. Okay, it's it's one thing if you know if it it's it's too expensive. You can't you know people cannot afford a hardware wallet like Trezor, you know, just for the long term. Uh, but um, but a mobile wallet is pretty secure, uh, you know, for for a small amounts of whatever satoshis or you know. Yep. Uh, but I like I would prefer people to do it in the right way than to do it in the easy way because if you want want to have an easy way the best way to do it is through a coinbase account or through an exchange account or through any uh th like uh, custodial solutions like uh if you if you do it in an easy way without realizing what you are doing without realizing what is the private key how to secure it how to safely store it and how to how, how to save your funds then you are gonna go and lose your fund anyway yeah so if you don't have have the right uh, right intentions of doing the or, or needing to put the work and effort to do it correctly it's better to do it in a custodial wallets and there are lots of services like that and people use them all the time it's not like people are not using bitcoin in india the bitcoin exchange volumes and uh, trades uh, trade volumes in exchanges like for other coins are pretty high and people are speculating a lot but what's missing is the the right intention of doing the doing this thing correctly doing it for the narrative for which it was created so that's what is missing so uh, i i don't think it's a technical problem uh, the means and the uh, tools are already available to people so they just have to dig in and invest the effort and time to figure out what the exact problem that they are trying to solve here and why it's important that's it otherwise everything is like all there in the internet open for all public and you can just read and learn and understand this thing you, mm. you just need to have the intention mm -hmm. very good um raj um so you you just uh, you previously in the beginning you talked about uh, this is what I see also the lack I, I see it in, in generally principally I see somehow there's something still missing in this in the process of this concentrated effort you talked about this concentrated effort so what would that concentrated effort if you know the the chain reaction of parameters conditions setting it and you know everything compounding you know all the factors you know economically financially geopolitically uh you know legally uh the you know repression oppression there's a lot of things happening right now i mean you just heard donald trump talking about for the first i mean this is i mean you know this is huge uh, to paraphrase him <laughs> uh <laughs> so, yesterday was a historic day yesterday or uh, friday it was i don't know i don't remember it was a historic day yeah, and on top of that, you know, you've got the SEC. Um, uh, so I'm going to have another interview tonight with uh, Eric Boscoel and Connor Brown on this topic too, um, uh, one of the topics. So uh, what I was going to ask you is that, okay, so do you would you see like the, the dominating force, the potentially dominating force, uh, you know, in this process of whatever you want to call it, education mass adoption you know um building up the infrastructure uh and really going more and more into you know the store of value medium exchange uh, uh transactional uh, payment systems do you see that coming from the merchants from the you know uh entrepreneurs merchants the middle class people you know whatever profession they have whether they're dentists or you know what i'm saying uh yeah. is do you see what's your perspective on that what's your vision what, what how, do you, how do you think it's going to evolve uh it's very hard to predict how it's going to evolve because uh we have no clue what this thing is uh this has traits with so many weird things so many weird phenomena that we haven't been able to connect the whole picture to figure out how this thing is going to affect our life we just uh we, we, we just only have a similar experience like what we are seeing right now in the era of internet and but the problem was in the era of internet nobody was watching internet in this kind of intense light and world changing view um, because the, the implication of internet was much more subtle but it changed the world anyway 
and the same kind of thing will happen with bitcoin it's the same thing as internet it's the same kind of phenomena and it's going to change our world in ways we cannot perceive right now so that's the difficult part uh, but um, in the even though we cannot predict something very long term we can kind of uh, get a sense of what might happen in very short term period and uh, i think what might happen in very short term period is um, I am hoping for the government to screw things up even more because the more they screw up, uh, the more it's gonna facilitate faster and faster. Because the more the fire will heat up the theater, the more people are gonna be restless and they will look for other solutions. Um, it's not are, hard. It's not hard to screw up. I mean, they are screwing up the whole time. You know. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they are in the path of self destruction. It's, it's the, oh no, the only question is, it's a matter of time when it's mm -hmm. gonna happen. It's gonna happen anyway because they have set their path back in 1904. Yeah. It's in and so, uh, right now, I think what's gonna happen is like uh, Bitcoin is still show, uh, still seen in the broader crypto and blockchain ecosystem as this old and uh, slow and cumbersome technology that doesn't do much that that doesn't that that is not cool enough and that is not super powery enough and so all of these other projects have spin up to uh, bridge those gaps but uh, the problem is uh, what bitcoin is trying to solve is not solvable by any other kind of projects because bitcoin is not a product bitcoin is a marketplace and uh, the uh, the difference between bitcoin and everything else is the exactly the difference between internet and dot com internet was the marketplace and dot coms were the shops in that marketplace and uh, the mis allocations we are looking right now is even uh, even severe than the dot com era bubble that happened because the dot com bubble was basically overvaluations of those new kind of shops. But what we are seeing right now is uh, people are mi misunderstanding the marketplace as a shop and they are trying to sell the market as a new wrapper as if that it's a kind of product and service that you sell in the market and trying to extract value out of it that's not how it should work and i i i have a hard time making sense out of it how you can uh, product make a product out of blockchain and then sell it to the market and say it's gonna do something weird and magical and different and blockchain is not even the thing that is doing the magic so right now we are seeing a huge phase of misallocations and i don't think we have seen the dot com bubble yet uh, we are in pre 1990s era where the internet just boomed and all these crazy people thought okay internet mm -hmm. is this new product and let's sell internet to people so you have internet a internet b internet c and everybody is trying to sell different internets to different parts of the world and it's as weird as that so uh, i think we are going to see a very huge amount of cleansing in upcoming future in all the blockchain and cryptocurrency market there are so much amount of money flowing around and so much misallocations and it's it's just not sustainable markets are not that inefficient markets has a self-correcting mechanisms and mm -hmm. that's gonna play out at some point so yeah and in the meantime bitcoin will be still this uh, 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 uh very obscured and very uh, limited uh, focused technology that does only one thing and one thing very good but that's the most important thing to do right now. And uh, I, I don't know how it's gonna develop. Maybe we will get some uh, internet task force kind of structure in the world for Bitcoin task force kind of thing. And all the nations will like uh, fund and sponsor these kind of projects with their developers, with companies and with universities and all. Uh, that, that, that can be a possible scenario and other than that, I think the market will develop slowly and steadily as more and more the politicians screw up the more and more they screw up more people will look for exits the more they look exactly. for exits the more they will look for infrastructures the more they look for infrastructure more there will be demand and more there will be demand there will be supply and so in order to get all these kind of supplies of infrastructures and engineering and products and solution we need we need them to screw up <laughs> so basically yeah. that's yeah and we have to you know to remind ourselves even in the bitcoin community i i sense that 
uh, what's the essence, you know, what, what is the essence of the vision of Bitcoin? And it's all about, you know, freedom and human rights. It's really, for the first time, I mean, this is from, as I see it, I mean, I don't know how you see it, but this is like the fundamental peace, the most fundamental and most peaceful war. It's, it's not a war, but, you know, a real um, um, fight, sort of, you know, between the, the you know, the, the oppressors and the freedom-seeking people. Yeah. And, and uh, what I was going to say also is that, you know, features like privacy, that should be, you know, is going to evolve eventually into, by default, fungibility. All these functions and features that is like totally complex, too complicated, not user-friendly at all. This is what I'm complaining about the whole time with all, whatever is Wasabi or all these other coin joint stuff. Um, and we are far away from that. I mean, I'm not even talking about India, you know, so I, I would just be happy if, if a, a small fraction of India's population would wake up, even if it's just the middle class who can afford to buy, you know, a fraction of a Bitcoin to, to start, you know, stacking sats, you know, as we say, or as Matt and M Marty says, and, and really accumulate and start hodling and, and uh, 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 triggering, triggering that network effect that massive network effect, which is going to come. The cat is out of the bag. It's unstoppable. Yep, right. Uh, I, I, I think there is another interesting thing that happens along with it is like the moment you have some stack, you immediately become uh, your privacy freak. You immediately exactly. become... Aware you're skin, that, you got skin in the game, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's skin in the game. And you immediately become aware that, okay, you have something that some people might not want you to have. And then you start asking the difficult question, okay, where is my internet traffic going? Who is looking into my laptop? Who is looking into my Android exactly. devices? Exactly, yes. And how do we secure this entire nakedness of ourselves in the digital world? And all these questions are difficult questions. And uh, privacy is not an easy thing. It's it's enormously difficult yeah. and uh, I don't think we can ever get privacy without having a fight against the totalitarian state uh, tendencies and they will always try to grab those privacy features. They will always try to take away those privacies and they will trade with something very, very, um, very, very exciting and very, very uh, uh, unrefusable something that is like utility. So the more you give up your privacy, the more utility you have, the more easy your, your experience becomes. So more headache you have less. So uh, uh, the only way people can wake up to these questions of privacy, data security and personal responsibility is once they put the skin in the game. And to, for them to put in the skin in the game, the, uh, the government needs to push it just a little bit further. They, they, they have been screwing up for yeah. a, a century now. They just need to keep on doing the same thing, their usual job, a little bit farther. And we might see the enough people putting skin in the game so that even, I don't know, I'm just very hopeful and optimistic to say this, like even maybe we can have a world of a digital world with privacy default in some future. Exactly. Yeah. And the simplification of it, you know. So, you know, again, it's about, uh, you know, as we always say, the, I mean, that's also what, what, what was Satoshi Nakamoto's, whoever that was, what, whatever that was. Um, vision is the separation, the total separation of, you know, the issuance and the control of money from the state, from the governments, from, you know, whatever it would be national, supranational or uh, whatever, you know, governmental um, structures or nation states. So this is, uh, this is going to be huge because it's going to, you know, make all these centralized structures obsolete. And this is the vision, you know, that we, that we peacefully make all these, uh, make a beautiful transition into, you know, a, into a, you know, for a planet that is totally, totally freed, you know, from, from any kind of, you know, uh, whatever you call it, enslavement, control, manipulation, yeah. and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. That was the vision. That was the narrative. But uh, uh, I am at this position uh, uh, with, the under, with this realization that uh, Bitcoin cannot achieve all of that. Bitcoin just mm -hmm. achieves a big part of it. It, it, mm -hmm. it does the separation of money and state. But state as a structure, is much more than just money and uh, th there is a there was a reason when uh, that the first human so social human beings uh, quite naturally decided 
among a king in the in their small clans and that king is not because to make control that ki that, that that king king position was there to uh, there to satisfy some necessities satisfy yeah. some and there are some kind of needs for these kind of structures mm -hmm. so uh, uh so my, my my hunch is uh we are going to see a more ref, mo, mo, um, a more advanced way of this same revolution that bitcoin is a manifestation of in much more different disciplines than structure and we have to have that because without that we cannot transition into a completely free and libre open digital yeah. world with exactly. default prime yeah and uh, Money is the part that Bitcoin solves, but there are other things that we need to solve. And for them, blockchain might not be even the right answer. And uh, uh, when Ethereum launched, I, I was very excited with Ethereum. But the thing is, like uh, the worst part of Ethereum was it's a money and uh, it should not have been a money. And it's uh, without the money part, the money is the worst thing that actually makes this design fail. Without the money part, it's an ingenious novel idea of creating state machine out of this global transaction hierarchy, uh, flat database. And that's very novel because that allows us to do different kinds of governance and structures on top of that system. But the thing is like, the only way we know how to solve the Byzantine general's problem is to put this money inside the design. Because yeah. if you don't have the money inside the design, you do not solve the Byzantine general's problem. So I don't know. I'm hopeful that we will see some kind of higher layer structures on this base layer as top protocols or maybe some uh, completely different kinds of design maybe some uh, designs which are pegged into this structure and but do something very different in its own way to facilitate this kind of governance model and lots of other things that we need to decentralize for fi to finally facilitate the world that satoshi envisioned beautifully said yeah so um yeah so in final conclusion um raj would you like to uh you know do you have any other like perspectives vision or or, or thoughts you want to share uh with our listeners and viewers and you know tell them where where they can find you i'm gonna you know put it in the show note anyway but uh um is there any like anything you wanted to emphasize to uh in your talk there are a lot of things to say uh, it's uh, and all of these discussions are already happening in twitter and many people are putting in much more brilliant way than i can ever put so yeah uh, if you want to for any newcomer who is listening to this show and doesn't have a clue what these guys are talking about and sounds very weird and crazy <laughs> uh, but there is a very good website by dargegi called 21 lessons yeah Go to that and you will find a fabulous rabbit hole to dive down into. And Geeky has done an amazing job curating this list and I just love it. And uh, this is the best way where you can figure out how weird this thing is. So it's weird and you're going to love it. And if you have some extra money, stack some sats. And you can follow me in Twitter. I am with the handle Rajarshi Maitra. Uh, my Twitter name is Raj. And I don't post that much. I am just scouring Twitter for ideas and things that I can share and things that I think other people are uh, have uh, something interesting to say. Uh, otherwise, whenever I'm just bored, I just use it for trolls. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wonderful. Well, wonderful. Uh, Raj, it's been really a pleasure talking with you. It's really educational. You're really knowledgeable. And, you know, that's, you know th that is the essence of what we do. We share knowledge and we share comprehension and we educate, we inspire people, we empower people. And that's what it should, should be all about. And, uh, um, yeah, and wish you all the best. I hope we we're going, we can repeat this maybe in a panel discussion with some other people in the future. I can see that already, uh, who could be in a good complementary also to you. And but but your knowledge, you know, your level of knowledge is really amazing. And uh, keep up, you know, the good work because uh, you know I think the people in India are going to really appreciate uh, what you have to say and what you have to share. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, so, thanks so much. Um, uh, thanks so much. I'm just, I, I, I just, I'm just fan of your show. You, you just put so <laughs> much you. 
content throughout the weeks like uh, you you are one of the best podcasts that i listen to and uh, yeah uh, i i always love talking about bitcoin it's such a crazy topic you you never know where you're going to end up like uh, <laughs> yeah and, which rabbit hole <laughs> yeah like there are so many rabbit holes and they're all <laughs> interconnected with each other and yeah. we're just jumping from here and there and it's always such an exciting thing to talk bitcoin with people i just love it so thanks a lot for having me uh, it it's been a pleasure talking with you and we i wish you all the best with all your podcast and all your life thank you raj yeah hope to repeat that soon again yeah keep up yeah, the good work thank you so much yeah, all right thanks have a good bye. day bye bye